St. Columba. On this day, in union with the church throughout the world, we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent. St. Columba School will present the Living Stations of the Cross on Friday, March the 31st at 1 o'clock p.m. All are welcome. We will also have our 7 o'clock p.m. Stations of the Cross on Friday evening. Lenten Covered Dish Fellowship is at 5.30 p.m. on Friday with a scriptural reflection from Father Mowry. This is a wonderful opportunity to get together after a busy week before stations on Friday evening. Bring a non-meat dish to share if you can. Donations will be given to the food cupboard for a full listing of all of the weekly opportunities to become closer to Jesus this Lent. Please take home a bulletin. The Catholic Relief Services Collection this weekend supports Catholic church organizations that carry out international relief and solidarity efforts. Programs include relief and resettlement for victims of persecution, war and natural disasters, development projects to improve living conditions for the poor, legal and support services for poor immigrants, reconciliation work for people suffering from violence, and advocacy on behalf of the powerless. Thank you for your generosity. Before Mass, we will pray the prayer for peace in Ukraine.
peace be with you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, it's a great joy and a true blessing for me to have the opportunity to join with you this evening here at St. Columbus Parish to celebrate this liturgy of the fifth Sunday of Lent and also to have the honor to bless this beautiful new mural that graces the sanctuary of your church. It's a joy to be with you. Let us now turn to the Lord and acknowledge our own sins in order to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
same call to the Romans, brothers and sisters. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you, whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit dwelling in you. The Word of the Lord. But you 
Jesus was talking about his death. While they thought that he meant ordinary sleep. So that Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died. And I am glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas, called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. But Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had beat him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house comforting her saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone laid across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He had been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the 
Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. invited artists to use their talents to draw the faithful more closely to the truths of our faith. And so it is that the Lord put it on the heart and to use the talents of Rain Escovito to have this beautiful mural here in the sanctuary of your church. This is my first opportunity. I've seen some pictures and they certainly do not do it justice. And for someone like myself who cannot draw a decent stick figure, it is absolutely astounding to see the talents of this young woman and to be used in the service of our faith to decorate God's house, but to give us an image that invites us into a mystery a window onto the holy, the best kind of art. And so we certainly thank the Lord for calling Rain and thank her for her generosity and a labor of love, which is a permanent addition, a beautiful addition, which will invite so many over time to pray and to enter in more deeply to the mysteries of our faith. Let's think about this gospel that we just heard. Very early on in Lent, when the season was first developing, these, this gospel and the gospels of the last two Sundays were attached to the third, fourth, and fifth Sunday. Remember back two weeks ago, it was the gospel of the woman at the well, the gospel about living water. Last week was the man born blind who's given sight by Jesus, the light of the world to go from darkness into the light. And in this gospel, the restoration of life in the miracle of bringing Lazarus forth from the tomb. Living water from darkness to light, new light. They're all about baptism. Church chose these Gospels because Lent is all about baptism. Lent is about taking on those actions of prayer and fasting and almsgiving to readjust our lives so that we are being faithful to the dignity of our baptism and to take a self-check, as it were, during these 40 days and to make an adjustment so that we're recognized as people who have died with Christ and had been raised to new life with Him. It's all about baptism. So much so that, of course, at the Easter Vigil and on Easter Sunday, we'll be invited to renew the promises of our baptism and to feel the water of baptism fall afresh on us in the rite of sprinkling. So this final this gospel for today, next Sunday, of course, already is Palm Sunday. This gospel of the raising of Lazarus is the seventh sign of seven, the final of seven signs in the gospel of St. John, beginning with the wedding feast of Cana and changing water into wine up to calling Lazarus forth from death. It's a sign that points to an even greater sign, something even more unthinkable and unimaginable, the death and resurrection of Christ himself. Lazarus, though, is called back into this life. It's really a resuscitation. There were two others in the Gospels, the, the uh, son of the widow of Nain, Jesus comes upon the funeral procession, touches him, and he's brought back to life. The daughter of Jairus had just died, and he, our Lord is there in a bed and tells her to arise, and she rises and raises up. But this is a different kind of resuscitation. Those other two, he, he didn't seem that Jesus knew them, and they're just dead, just recently, and within minutes or shortly. In this case, it's someone he loves. And in this case, he's already in the tomb four days. And still our Lord can say, Lazarus, come forth. It points to the greater miracle of our Lord's 
who is the good of Jesus love. Serving Lazarus, serving Mary and Martha. But he loves you. He loves us. He loves me. The one Jesus loves is ill. And we were ill, fallen in sin, facing our own death. And so Jesus comes when we are in the house of affliction to our heaven. things I would just present for your reflection today and for these final two weeks of the Lenten season when we cross, cross the threshold into the great Easter Tudor. First of all, notice the disappointment of the sisters. They really felt that Jesus didn't care. that we 
true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
revealed yourself in the person of Christ. May she who has crafted these images of your blessed and ineffable Trinity, the Blessed Mother and St. Joseph, and the adoring angels, show you honor by growing in the likeness of your Son. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
sinners that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man he wept for Lazarus his friend, and as Eternal God raised him from the tomb. Just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. To him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim.
as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ.
God that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I'd just like to say a quick thank you, Bishop, for coming today and the gorgeous words that you said about our mural and the words that you spoke to us today in your homily. I'd like to thank you and also thank the choir and the servers today and for everyone else who helped me set up. Thank you. Brother well, Bobby, you're very, very welcome. Uh, it's a joy, as I said at the beginning of Mass, to be here with you. One of my most favorite things, one of the, one of the children once said, what's the funnest thing of being a bishop? And I always say it's when I'm out of the, out of the office and in one of our parishes or schools somewhere in the diocese to be with the faithful, the clergy, the religious, uh, and the wonderful lady of our diocese. I, I, I'm delighted to be here. And what a, what a beautiful addition to your church. I'm sure I hope and pray it will be a source of fervent prayer and devotion for all who uh, look upon it and, and who pray before it, especially seeking the intercession of your patron, St. Columba. I just joined Father Maori in, in thanking everyone who helped in the preparation and celebration of the liturgy this evening. Your, your music ministry is outstanding. Thank you for leading us so beautifully in our song prayer. It's so important in, in, in the liturgy. All, all of the liturgical ministers, that wonderful army of servers, thank you so much. Who is our master of ceremonies? Came all the way from Lancaster to be here uh, with us. Thank you, Claire, and uh, to everyone. I look forward to greeting you as we as we leave church uh, today. And I never want to lose an opportunity, though, when I am in our parishes, to express my fraternal gratitude and my sincere esteem for my brother priest here today, for your pastor, Father Maori, certainly for the son of the parish here, Father Clotonis, who is in Carlisle at the moment. Uh, but uh, to say thank you, brothers, for the example of your priestly life and ministry and for the wonderful care that you give the part of the Lord's flock that's entrusted to your shepherding care. So thank, thank you very much. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who come about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. We open 689. Keep in mind number 688.